Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. The consequences when you're in a car and you're angry, it's a lot different than when you're a pedestrian or a cyclist. They were angry and they they like chased her down and were yelling at her. And Mm -hmm. all she's really trying to do is to get from A to B. She's just not using a car. When the streets aren't safe and cars are driving recklessly, it sort of eliminates that possibility where we could be a really great city for biking. Certain roads in the St. Louis area have a reputation. In the city, it's Grand and Gravois. In St. Louis County, we're talking St. Charles Rock Road, West Florissant, and Halls Ferry. And the rep these wide, high-speed arterial roads share owes to how many walkers and bikers have sustained serious injury on them, or in too many other cases, died there by traffic violence. The St. Louis-based nonprofit TrailNet recently released a report that presents key findings about STL's traffic violence during 2023. Here to discuss that crash report and share anecdotes from its citizen survey, we welcome Cindy Mentz, CEO of TrailNet. Cindy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Elaine. I'm glad to be here. Now, overall, according to your report, which is based on data from the Missouri Statewide Traffic Accident Record System, mm-hmm. 646 people were injured or killed while walking or biking in St. Louis City and County in the year of 2023. And 149 people in the region, including drivers, lost their lives due to traffic violence last year. Cindy, help put these numbers into context for us. Is traffic violence, particularly for pedestrians, a worsening problem? Yes, it absolutely is. What we're seeing is driver behavior has changed, especially after the pandemic. We're seeing more speeding, uh, failure to yield for pedestrians. We're also seeing inattentive driving or distracted driving happening more frequently and improper uh, uh, attention to to signals. So like blowing through stoplights or ignoring stoplights before you turn uh, right on red. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing that. We've been tracking this data for about four years, and while there there are slight ups and downs, the the overall trend is still going up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the that tracking for four years, if my math is right, that takes us to twenty twenty. Yes. So, what was it in twenty twenty that compelled Trailnet? to put together a report such as this? I mean, was it the number of fatalities that you all were seeing? It was, and oftentimes when a pedestrian or a cyclist is killed, the first ones the news media reaches out to is TrailNet. So we found ourselves responding quite frequently to these issues. We also found that our own constituents and members were becoming victims of this traffic violence. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the first year since you began doing the crash report, mm-hmm. that you've also uh, you've also included some stories from people, right? You, the report starts with the mention that each data point is more than a statistic. So these personal accounts mm-hmm. from a, a survey that TrailNet conducted over the winter, can you share maybe one or two of the stories that, that really encapsulates what is important about reports such as this one? Sure. Um, Well, one of the respondents was Aubrey, and Aubrey Byron um, said that in one season, you know, like like the fall, she had three incidents of cars, drivers chasing her while she's on her bike. So they were angry, and they, they like, chased her down and were yelling at her. And Mm -hmm. all she's really trying to do is to get from A to B. She's just not using a car. And so... Um, she really found that, you know, when people are acting out while they're driving, the consequences when you're in a car and you're angry, it's a lot different than when you're a pedestrian or a cyclist. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people can be pretty destructive if they're angry and driving. Mm -hmm. Um, 
we also had something a little more hopeful because um, one of our anonymous respondents noted how St. Louis really can be a bike-friendly city. We have the streets, the grid network, the ability to connect people quite well. But when the streets aren't safe and cars are driving recklessly, it sort of eliminates that possibility where we could be a really great city for biking. Mm -hmm. So as far as the the numbers go, Mm -hmm. we're going to come back to some of those stories a little bit later on. 28 people who were walking were killed by drivers in 2023 which made it the most deadly year on record for pedestrian fatalities in St. Louis County. Do you have some sense, Cindy, of whether county leaders are taking this issue seriously? So we we do have um, a meeting coming up where we're looking forward to to meeting with with, uh, Executive Sam Page, um, and we hope to get their attention. We've worked with them in the past in 2019, St. Louis County. We work with them to develop their action plan for walking and biking. And so they do have some plans where they could address it and have separated and protected facilities. Um, But they do recognize that, um, especially in North County, you have less connectivity for people um, walking Mm -hmm. and biking and you have less mid-block crossings okay. um, that make people safe. So connectivity, you're talking specifically for about... sidewalks. Okay, mm-hmm. so structures that yeah. permit for... Right. Okay. And what you're going to find on the north side is more people likely to use transit, not owning a car, mm-hmm. and also, you know, the other people walking uh, about are people under that don't drive. Right, So right. children mm-hmm. <laughs> walking to school or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. One of the other things about St. Louis County uh, has to do with a a term that I'm I'm just getting familiar Mm -hmm. with now, and that's strodes. Kathy, uh, I'm sorry, Cindy, what is a a strode, and why do they pose such danger to pedestrians of all ages, including children, as well as to bicyclists in St. Louis County? Right. So a strode is really, it's a street and a road combined. You know, you put those two together, and it's like, it doesn't really understand its purpose. So Uh if a street, a strode, for instance, New Hall's Ferry, Mm -hmm. it's connecting people um, by, by car, and it has like five lanes. But it's also a corridor where there's grocery stores, parks, metro stations, bus stops along that corridor. And so it's not really meeting those needs where the blocks are longer, you've got five wide lanes. Mm -hmm. I would challenge you to feel that you were safe crossing the street there if you had to like make it to the bus stop or something. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, and one of the things that I... I do know as a, now I'm kind of a longtime transplant uh-huh. is seeing people cross really big roadways, um, not where there are traffic signals, but sort of in the middle. But that's just sort of what people do um, insofar as you know, like putting things up at these strodes to make them safer. Is there anything that can be done in a relatively easy way? Yeah, so the roads need to be designed in a way that meet the needs of all users. And so for pedestrians, having uh, shorter crossings for them, so you have like a pedestrian island in the middle, so that's a physical structure that's going to protect them as they're passing, um, as as they're crossing. You can do a lane reduction. Rarely do we need five lanes. Mm -hmm. St. Louis does not really have a traffic jam. I challenge you to find a traffic jam that lasts more than 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, So we don't have um, uh, those those hours of of delays typically in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Um, So we can slow cars down as well. So less lanes, slowing down cars and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the city, to make sure that we we talk about that, in the city there was an increase in total pedestrian crashes, but there were fewer fatalities. Cindy, was that just a a function of pure luck that fewer people died in these crashes, or, or do we have other insight into why that was the case? I would definitely say that there's more awareness, especially from the victim side for pedestrians and cyclists. They're more aware of uh, the dangers and the risks to to walking and biking while they're out there. And so I do think that people are more cautious when they cross the street. I mean, you're right here by Grand. Are you a little more cautious when you cross the street? Yes, definitely. (laughs) 
And so yeah. the that caution, you know, that people are um, are exercising. There's what people are doing when they're crossing the street, and then there's also what is happening with people uh, in their cars. So yes. we have Ron, who is calling from Ferguson, who has uh, I think something to to note about that. Ron, welcome to St. Louis on the air. Yes, I would say that after the Mike Brown situation, where the Justice Department arch defenders got involved to start suing municipalities for giving out tickets, many of which I think were probably rightly do those individuals, the police stop enforcing. So you would expect that if there's a lack of enforcement, there's going to be an increase in fatalities. I mean, I've seen, even though House Ferry is five lanes wide, it's been that way for 50 years. Mm-hmm. So the, the change is not in the the... the the street structure, which it might be nicer to make it smaller, is the lack of enforcement. St. Louis region is the only region in the country I've been to mm-hmm. where I can see individuals uh, driving with no license plates. I've been to Florida. I'm going to Florida this week. I drive around all day long. Never seen anybody with expired license plates. You know, and it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Ron, thank you and so and much. And so to that point of yes. enforcement, that is one of the things that is part of the, the four main takeaways from the report. Absolutely. Cindy, what would you say? So I would say um, one thing that we did, so um, distracted driving legislation has been passed statewide in Missouri. And as far as the temporary tags um, component, um, licenses will be um, will be covered at the point of purchase. And so no longer, you know, it's going to start to phase out. You won't see those temporary tags that people just have paper written uh, on the back of their cars. They're going to have to do it at the point of purchase. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a change that's happening with this distracted driving legislation. Um, I think Ron's right. There's a lot of speeding that's that's happening. And with lack of enforcement, um, it's happening more often. Um, Pedestrians are they're trying to access resources a lot. We see this near um, bus stops. Mm-hmm. So our bus frequency is very low. It could be 40 minutes to an hour. And if you have to wait that long or you miss a bus, maybe you need to drink water. Maybe you need to go to the bathroom. So people are accessing things that they need while they're while they're waiting. So we mm-hmm. tend to see more crossing back and forth mm-hmm. near those bus stops yeah. as well. So this point that you've made about distracted driving, mm-hmm. um, as we noted, one of the four solutions in TrailNet's 2023 crash report uh, is not only uh, to to address some of the d- the distracted driving, it's finding equitable, safe, and affordable ways for stricter um, traffic law enforcement. Is there a- an example of this type of enforcement that you can can offer? Well, the city of St. Louis um, just passed. It's waiting for the mayor's signature. Uh, Board Bill 105 and 106. And so in the city of St. Louis, they are returning to um, using automated enforcement for um, for signal violations and mm-hmm. for speeding. Um, they, they've done a, a deep dive making sure that it is equitable and doesn't put in additional burden on already vulnerable um, and disinvested communities. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a, a method to evaluate its outcomes. So We'll see how that rolls out. TrailNet will continue to pay attention to what that legislation looks like and how it's instituted. Um, I've heard folks say that it's a money grab. Any extra money is also being turned over to a traffic safety fund. Mm -hmm. So 105 is the enforcement. And then when people pay their fines, um, any excess funding will go to traffic and safety improvements. Mm -hmm. Um, And still, some debate will happen about making sure that you're um, meeting the needs in the areas that need it most. Right. And Mayor Tashara Jones mm-hmm. has said that she will sign that measure. Yes. Now, you mentioned earlier uh, mm-hmm. Grand. Yes. So this is the fourth year in a row Grand Boulevard has been the most dangerous corridor for people walking in St. Louis. And then uh, in addition to that, Gravoy and Kings Highway mm-hmm. have been particularly uh, dangerous. Now, last year, St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones signed into law a plan to use at least $40 million of the American Rescue Plan Act funds toward traffic calming measures. I mean, what would you like to see happen, Cindy, at Grand Boulevard and also roads like Gravoy and Kings Highway? Well, first, Board Bill 120, as it's also called, we, I, I think it's a great example of the advocacy work that TrailNet has done on be- behalf of St. Louisans to make the city safer. We're really excited to see 
this historic investment in streets. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to see on Grand is shorter crossing distances, pedestrian safety islands. There are places where it could have a lane reduction. It also happens to be um, the location of the busiest bus line. The, The Grand bus is the busiest. It's even articulated. And so you have to anticipate you have those pedestrian users and making it safer for them mm-hmm. along the way. Now, is there a limit insofar as infrastructure is mm-hmm. concerned, a limit to what that can do to calm traffic? In the survey responses that you received right. from this winter, people called attention to drivers who are aggressive. That's right. something we've talked about on the show. Have a disregard for human life. They're ignoring traffic laws and signs. So, you know, how much of that how much of it can infrastructure really do? That is a great point. And so all of these things have to work together. So the infrastructure is really, you know, engineering in such a way that we believe that you can design the streets so that there are zero fatalities. And St. Louis just adopted this Vision Zero resolution Mm -hmm. that basically says that. And so we have to look at our designs because primarily we've been designing for cars. And now um, Vision Zero is going to have you track and look to see that you are meeting the needs of all users. Driver behavior certainly factors into it. April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month, so I'm mm-hmm. glad to be here to talk about that. And if you go to trailnet.org, you can sign up for the Drive the Change uh, campaign where we want you to sign up and make the pledge to buckle up and phone down. Mm-hmm. So your own behaviors can also affect the overall safety for, for everyone. And being more aware of, like, when you're speeding – you know, even five miles over the speed limit can make a difference in whether or not it's a serious injury or a person dies. Mm-hmm. Now, I had mentioned earlier, I wanted to come back to the stories mm-hmm. because it's all too easy to forget that numbers do go back to human beings, as individual pedestrians and cyclists who have families, they're part of neighborhoods and communities. And so the report says that more than 14,000 people in the St. Louis region were affected by traffic violence, and that includes drivers, pedestrians, and cyclists, and that encompasses people who were killed, injured, had damage to property. I mean, what what are the, the non-tangible consequences? I'm thinking specifically about... Uh, anxiety or fear that people have after traffic violence experiences. Absolutely. And we carry that with us as TrailNet because we hear from the people themselves directly about the trauma inflicted on them. They've lost mothers, fathers, sons, children. These crashes oftentimes happen on arterials. So, for instance, on Page Avenue, we did a road safety audit together with Missouri Department of Transportation. We met people along the corridor. They're impacted because these crashes happen in their front yards. Mm -hmm. Imagine it happening in your front yard and you being called to help pull somebody out of a car. I mean, it it, happening in those neighborhoods, it it really has a lasting impact, the trauma of it all. And just in our final minute here, on a scale from one to 10, Cindy, I mean, how confident do you feel that progress is being made and not just promise on making our streets safe? Uh, I would say that I'm at a scale of one to 10, I'm at an eight. I think that the city has made a lot of steps in the right direction. We have to be patient while the construction happens, but we're seeing a lot of protected infrastructure being designed and planned for and also funded. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to making it safe and safe. St. Louis. And St. Louis County, looking forward to the conversation. Oh, great. Cindy Mentz is CEO of TrailNet. Cindy, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you so much. You can find TrailNet's 2023 St. Louis City and County Crash Report at trailnet.org. This episode was produced by Emily Woodbury. Audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Doerr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. St. Louis on the Air proudly supports local artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? 
suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.